What's good, party people? This is According to Woods, and uh, there's something that I have here, right? This is the first ever California Women's Bantamweight Championship won by Brooke Mayo right here, right now, but... I have the current champion, uh, sends the belt. She won it back at Sparsar 49 at Commerce Casino. She's the one, the only CSW trade, part of the Dragic crew. She is one, J-Flow, Jennifer Flores. Jen, what's going on, champ? Nothing much, just chilling, enjoying my little vacation. Ready to get back to it on Monday, though. Yeah, well, and I know uh, after... Uh, talking to coach ben jones shout out to the badger ben jones but you know he after a fight he kind of lets you guys have a week to kind of decompress and what have you after long fight camp and all the aches and pains that go mm -hmm. along with it and what have you but uh i mean you got a seven second knockout there wasn't too <laughs> much that you got uh ache or pained Right? I know exactly. I feel this uh, week vacation feels a little weird to me because I don't know. It happened in seven seconds. Yeah. And um, sorry. okay, sorry, that was weird. No, um, no, I, I, I just put you. <laughs> oh, center. Okay, yeah. I was like, what is that? Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So it just felt weird because it happened so fast in seven seconds, but. Honestly, um, sometimes I am really like hard on myself and I do need to like relax a little bit. And I learned a lot of that this fight camp, honestly, and it turned out perfectly amazing. You know, my performance went like better than I could have ever expected. But that's why I, I'm kind of like forcing myself to take this week off because knowing me, I would have been back like, you know, on Monday, like after that weekend, this weekend that I just fought. Um, but, you know, fight camp does take a lot out of you, especially the harder that you train. And I try to give it like 100% every time, even like more than that if I can. So that's why, you know, taking this week off and really forcing myself to relax and enjoy like family and stuff. Enjoy not driving out to Fullerton, you know, every day. <laughs> so it's been nice. No, 100%. And uh, Freddie Vasquez... You know, showing the support here. Angela hey. Flores saying, yes, go Jen, 100%. Which uh, I've, I don't I don't want to toot my own horn, but like, it's almost like your teammate, Alondria Brown, right? When I was like, oh, damn, like, there's, there's girls training at CSW. And of course it happens before and people, you know, take classes, self-defense and what have you. Uh, but fighters, like fight girls, I like, I don't think. Uh, that has happened uh, at least in a, like a large form since like Aaron Tohill, who you know stepped in there with Layla Ali back in the day, right? Mm -hmm, so that's like what I heard. yeah, so when I was like, oh wow, you're there, and I started seeing the Instagram posts with you and Alandria and you and Jacob and you and Curtis, yeah. and I was just like, <laughs> oh, and then you, know, you started trading with Coach Dale, and I was like, oh, it's happening, it's happening, and I was, <laughs> and every time I saw you, going back to uh, shout out to the Grappling Network and the. Uh, the submission only series uh but you were there and i was like you're gonna be champ you're gonna yep. be state champ and you're like yeah. <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah but here you are here mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. state champ right here <laughs> it happened fast dude three fights um i mean i i put in so much work so you know i feel like i definitely earned it and deserve it for sure. And yeah. I just want to keep, you know, keep on this road, keep pave, paving the way because I feel like I have so much more work to do still. No, absolutely. And uh, the good brother, your teammate, my sketchy artist 99 says, yeah, hey. <laughs> belt is just the beginning. Exactly. <laughs> And uh, the Charles, Charles, the Professor Wilson saying, hey, people, what's going on, Charles? Uh, great to have you here. But my goodness. Um, Obviously, on a seven-second knockout, yes, it's thrilling, right? That's the best-case scenario in terms of MMA. Now, if you're that's the, the first time I've knocked anyone out too. That's crazy, <laughs> that's right? <so> cool. <laughs> but I mean, there's so much that you wanted to display, right? Like you're you're gearing up for a full three-round fight, what have you, right? And then mm -hmm. to have it 
happen so quickly and that first knockout yes it's it's almost like a high and low right and uh you know sometimes as a fan before i even got into this i'd be wondering like they just did something amazing like some superhero ish why are they complaining because they had a whole arsenal of stuff a whole game plan that went right out the window because hey something spectacular happened which is uh kind of your sentiment isn't it Yes, exactly. I was like kind of disappointed that I was over so soon. Actually, when I got off stage and the whole camo staff was right there and you go sit and uh, talk to the doctor, I was still kind of like, it's over, like confused a little bit. <laughs> and I was sitting there and they're just all like, you know, like talking and like just pacing back and forth and stuff. And they're like, you know what? You, you know, you just broke a record and I'm just like sitting there like, dang, like I wish that fight was longer. <laughs> and they're, they're just like, you broke the record for fastest knockout. Um, and then th one of the other guys, I don't know his name, but he was like, you tied for the fastest knockout, but you got the fastest knockout in like the female uh, history or whatever. And I was like, oh, I get, I guess that's cool. <laughs> And then not until like a few days later, it hit me and I was like, oh, you know what? That's pretty cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, it's wild, right? Because it takes a while to kind of take it all in, right? Because you trained. I mean, how, how much time did you have before the title fight? Did you know this was going down? This fight camp, um, I had a lot of time. I think I had about like six or seven weeks. So a little over a month. So it, it was more than enough time to definitely get ready. But the thing is, I came right back from having COVID and that sucked a lot. Like, I'm glad that I had enough time because that, that first week, first like two weeks, honestly, coming back, it was hard. I could not breathe. I was like, Ooh, gassed really fast. So I had to put in a lot of work. No, 100%. And Rocky Nelson says, what took you so long? Uh, obviously, he's joking, but <laughs> congratulations, Shep. Um, you know, uh, you were ready for a marathon, but you got it done in a foot race. Uh, that's super cool. Now, you, you, you talked about COVID, and, and I hate to kind of dredge it up because it seems like everybody's talking about it ad nauseum through, you know, the last couple of years and what have you. But, you know, there was a real crazy thing that happened in fighters where, you know, a lot of amateurs went pro out of necessity because there were so few and far uh, fights to, to happen. Uh, also, mm -hmm. training. Training was like speak easies where you're like, hey, we're, we're yeah. going to do it. <laughs> we saw like car jujitsu as a weird hybrid of what was going down, you yeah. know, because people were jonesing. They were literally jonesing. They're like, I'm healthy, drug free, whatever. But you were having yeah. the, the, you're having the jujitsu shakes, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, COVID was a crazy time. I I know there was like backyard like tournaments too for jujitsu going on during that time. And yeah, a lot of people went pro um, just because there's like no fights. But thankfully, I came at the right time because um, like I said, I had taken like three years off of like training in MMA and stuff. And I had just gotten back into it like this past like year, a little over a year now. But I came right at the perfect time because stuff started opening and then, you know, Spar Star opened and that's when I like pretty much jumped in. So thankfully I didn't have to deal with that. No, 100%. And uh, speaking of things he didn't have to deal with, Charles, the Professor Wolfson says, don't be upset at a knockout. If you trained hard, a knockout proved that you did exactly that, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh but how, I mean, you said that first week was tumultuous. Like for me, man, it was wild. I caught it back like in August of 2021. Uh, it, like I didn't think I was going to pull through. Um, That's crazy. You know, I had the weird hallucinations, man. I saw like my parents and wow, were That's passed crazy. away. Yeah, I, I, it was weird. But how bad did it get for you? For me, like everyone around me had gotten it um because this was around the time of the holidays so like new year's and stuff um i got it pretty bad like i would say i got it worse than everyone around me it wasn't like too bad to where i was like absolutely dying but i i had all the symptoms like 
And it was really weird because the symptoms would show up like one day and then the next day they'd be gone and then it would be another symptom. So like for two days I would have like a headache and then it went away. And then the next day, like, I don't know, I just had like horrible body aches. I remember that was probably like the worst, like horrible, horrible body aches. My body just hurt. And I was like, oh no, this is the end of my career. I just started like, I'm already old, like <laughs> my bones hurt. And then um, all of a sudden, like a week later, I just couldn't breathe. It was hard. Like all of a sudden, I just had no cardio at all. And that's when I knew it was bad. I was like, all right, I have COVID, so I need to relax. <laughs> and so, yeah, I got better. I barely got like my smell and taste back, like not too long ago, like a week ago, honestly. It took forever. That was the last thing that took forever to come back my smell and taste. When did you yeah. know it is that it, it went? Like, did you know pretty, like right from the jump, like, hey, I'm trying to get some electrolytes or trying to eat some food to get my nutrition. And they're like, I, I can't it taste was, anything. It was pretty early. So like that first week that I was having all these like on and off symptoms that um, towards the end when I like didn't have any cardio or anything and I couldn't breathe really well, that's when um, I pretty much lost my smell and taste. I mean, not to bring light on a negative situation that that's horrible, right? But I mean, <laughs> cut and wait. You're like that that the whole temptation of eating stuff, whatever. Like I can't taste some ice cream, a pint of ice cream or pizza any damn way. So what ifs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it did help because like things that I don't think are pleasant, like leaves pretty much freaking salad and kale like it was easier to eat for sure <laughs> there you go there you go <laughs> oh man that's uh, but that makes your win you know and as uh, decisive you know you didn't leave it in the hands of the judges which again you're absolutely prepared to do the, the training that you did you had an extra week i mean uh, on average you know good fight camp um, i guess the general consensus is six weeks she had a little over that a little over a week uh over that threshold so that's mm -hmm. cool but you know again you were in the brink of in, in the throes of covid so what you did you know obviously you had that kind of call to arms and going oh my gosh i just started back after a three-year sabbatical getting mm -hmm. back in it and whatever and it could be over right yeah. and you were kind of aware that time is of the essence which i think it's poetic justice that it was a seven second knockout Mm -hmm. that was crazy yeah I just every fight camp is different and like I don't know I just learned a lot about learn a lot about myself every fight camp and um yeah honestly it's just it's, they're all different and definitely this one I want to say like coach Dale and coach Ben like they help me out so much like especially you know everything else like training and stuff but definitely like emotionally like they're so emotionally like supportive as well and yeah i just love them dude they're they're the best ever <laughs> i know 100 percent. and again your teammate my sketchy artist he says we try to enjoy the fight but we drill perfection it was perfect execution mm-hmm mm -hmm. yep now um Obviously, we're, you know, we're talking a lot about the title win, but, uh, you know, one thing that I thought was a bit, um, definitely not odd, but it wasn't like you were facing somebody in California. You're fighting for the California state title. You reside in California, Southern California to be specific, but it was somebody from out of state, you know, that they brought in to fight you. Uh, was there any game plan strategy change for adjusting to that or you're just like whatever because usually some some people in your your weight class and whatever like you know the deal right when you're not fighting mm -hmm. you're supporting your teammates as the badger crew supported you in your title win right mm -hmm. uh going mm -hmm. into the cage coming yeah. out of it and what have you so you see a lot of the you know other gyms other competitors or what have you you might have even seen them fight in person or maybe on film but that you didn't have with your opponent of the night yeah so they had to fly someone from oklahoma i guess because they couldn't find somebody around here in california to fight me um so you know that's what just happened 
um heather is like the best matchmaker ever and she's just a freaking amazing person i love her and she found me this fight um which i'm super thankful for and i don't know we we did find this girl that i fought beatrice on um youtube we've seen some of her fights and she seemed like she had kind of a more like aggressive style like me where she kind of comes forward and she's a bit of a wrestler um so like my i I always have like ideas for a fight but i understand that it pretty much never really goes like how you expect it to go like that's just what i've learned from my past three fights so you just have to be prepared for anything and i just expected her to probably try to like come forward and like um wrestle me so i was like ready for that but i don't know once i got in there and i was able to i i saw right away that i was in range and she was backing up i was like oh, okay well i'm going forward and like right when i literally just split made that decision i just let my hands go um and that's what my coaches told me um dale and ben they're like just let your hands go and i did so and it was awesome <laughs> Absolutely. And, and shout out to both uh, the Badger Ben Jones, your head coach, and your striking coach, Dale Roarball. Uh, just love those dudes. Just constant support. have made major parts in my own career. So, And what they're doing with all of you guys, uh, man, it's just, it's just absolutely amazing. But obviously, you were talking about Beatrice, right, from Oklahoma. And to me, you know, I'm when you talk about Oklahoma in regards to combat sports, arguably some of the greatest like wrestlers pure wrestlers that this country has ever you know produced have come out of that region you know mm -hmm. the briscoes the funks danny hodge you could literally bend pliers with his bare hands and what have you you know aau ncaa re left right and center they just you know it comes by way yeah. of oklahoma right and it's wild because you started out as a jujitsu practitioner, right? Which is a different grappling style. But mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're pretty ready to kind of get in the pocket and wrestle her if you need be. Which that's almost like being a, a, a matador of sorts and taking the bull by the horns. Because again, there's something about the Oklahoma still water or something. Yeah, yeah wrestlers, man, they're built double tough with like double limbs, and it's <laughs> wild. It's just, they're just wild. But I mean, yeah. you're fully prepared to kind of sign off and go like, "Here, this is this is what it goes." If if the opportunity presents itself, exactly. I like my goal, just in general as a fighter, is to just be able to like just be able to adapt like right away. So. You know, I, my jujitsu is like a really strong background of mine and I feel very confident in it, like a hundred percent. So I always have that, but you know, every fight starts standing and I want to be able to strike as well. And, you know, wherever the fight goes, I'll be able to go with it. No, hundred percent. Um, which I guess because you were, I mean, that's a nice little feather in your cap, right? You know, having a wrestler, right? And knowing that, you know, in the regional scene in Oklahoma, that's kind of where she made her bread and butter. You know, she's aggressive, you know? So does it feel kind of like maybe you're kind of a jipped out of an experience because you were able to knock her out rather than to test your metal in terms of your grappling prowess against her? Um. Kinda, I guess, but honestly, my goal for this fight, just in general, like regardless of anything or the opponent was to just, for this one, be like the most relaxed that I ever have. And definitely, like I, I did want to knock out, like that's been one of my goals since like day one. And I've been working with Dale like really hard, like super hard. I'm there all the time and, you know, just learning. So I, I accomplished um, what I wanted to accomplish. I, like I said, I feel really confident in my grappling because my grappling isn't a traditional like jujitsu style. Like I don't fight from my back and, you know, I wrestle with all the guys at CSW and stuff. So I, I know that I could have been able to combat her, her wrestling style for sure. Yeah. And you know what? Um, it's again, I think, you know, your base going in for, 
you know, MMA longevity and productivity, right? Uh, they say, and you could probably speak to it because it's you, but they say it's easier to take a grappler and teach him how to strike rather than taking a striker and teach him grappling because there's a whole range of motion and all that jazz. So, I mean, the fact that you got a knockout as a, a traditional grappler, mm -hmm. that's pretty damn impressive. Yeah, in seven seconds, and I've only been training striking for about a year with Dale. So it's pretty crazy, and it's pretty impressive, and I'm pretty proud of myself and my team and everybody. So that helped me. No, 100%. And uh, love seeing female fighters of all combat sports. I'm actually training uh, a new female wheelchair boxer up here in Canada. Uh, so Nice. Yes. And, and that's one thing that I love, um, uh, especially in regards to female sports, uh, combat sports specifically, because, like, I think in many ways, even after the Ronda Rousey, the Chris Cyborgs, the K Kayla Harris, and the Amanda Nunes, and the list goes on, the, on, you know, Misha Tates and whatever, I still feel in some respects that the optics, especially in the non, you know, combat sports world, right, you, you kind of the pop cultural lexicon where they don't reside in our community, they kind of feel, I kind of feel like they treat female you know boxing mma jiu-jitsu muay thai and what have you especially here in north america much like the mma was you know like male mma was in the late 90s early 2000s where it's kind of a sideshow what and what have you but mm -hmm. one thing that i've experienced and obviously the fans at spar star 49 experience first had in your fight but anytime you put a female fight grappling match super fight whatever on the card chances are when people are walking to their cars at the end of the night chances are it could be amazing fights in the mail you know uh portion of the card but the ones that are people are going to be talking about are the female fights do, do you feel yeah that's oh yeah apropos assessment definitely yeah it's like um, nothing against like the male fighters, you know, um, but it's just more, I feel like it's more memorable. Um, I'm not in the crowd to really like experience it. So, you know, I can't really speak for like the fans and stuff, but I know like my mom and, and my friends and stuff that were in the crowd, they're like, everyone just like stood up and it was crazy. And like, people just freak out and, uh, it's exciting and stuff. And, I want to be able to entertain people. So, <laughs> and, and even you said, you mentioned walking to my, walking to your car. Like I was walking to my car and there's like a group of people that were like freaking out. They're like, Oh, you're that girl. We saw you. Like that wasn't seven seconds. It was a five second knockout. And they're just like <laughs> telling me stuff. And it was really funny, but yeah. <laughs> No, absolutely. And especially when you're you're talking, you know, you spoke earlier about making an impact and, and, and a difference to, you know, your your combat sports virtues, right? Well, that's living an impression because here's the thing, you know, I don't care if you call it NFL, NBA, movie theater experience, what have you. The name of the game is to put asses in seats, uh, an ass in every 18 inches, uh, whether that be there at the fights, watching on a stream, at a bar, what have you. This is entertainment. Yes, it's sport, but it's entertainment mm -hmm. too, right? Exactly. Uh, so when those folks are paying their ticket for an MMA fight, what you did, that's exactly what they're, you know, they're paying for, what they're, what they're expecting. It's like, I'm going to see somebody get knocked out. Right. Yeah. They might not even know your name, but Monday morning they're like, oh, man, I went to the fights. Blah, and this this girl she just came out of nowhere. She looked like a you know, girl next door, whatever. <laughs> and guess what? She just knocked this chick out. Oh, my, like, <laughs> and it's it's that. Right. And, and mm -hmm. you know, in some ways you you capitalize that. Maybe that person that they're telling to you comes to the fight themselves. Maybe they, te you know, like there's a jujitsu or catch wrestling gym or Muay Thai gym or whatever. Now they put their daughters in or, you know, their wives and self-defense and whatever. And this, there's this whole legion that, that comes out because of your action. And of course, like, you know, in many ways, you know, it takes a lifetime to become an overnight success. So, you know, training from when you were 18, you know, at, mm -hmm. at Pinnacle in Redlands and, you know, you know, taking that three-year sabbatical, 
going to CSW, right? And, and really adapting that style, right? And then the seven week or so training camp, right? All of it, every bit of it, you having COVID, right? Almost like, it, it, again, it's poetic justice that it, all of it almost culminated in that. And, it, and in that netted you arguably the richest prize that Southern California or California MMA has to offer. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, mad publicity, uh, mad publicity, and it, and it's inspiring, hundred percent. Now, obviously, you were talking about like you didn't you didn't get a chance to be in the crowd. Obviously, you're warming up, you're in the back, you, you, in the back. Uh, but one thing that you did get to experience that everybody that was there at Amherst Casino for Star Star didn't get to experience is oh the magic crew around, right and walking you out to the fight as they often do because you know it's not you're fighting one of you you're fighting all of you right oh yeah uh, right so after this knockout what was your your teammates reaction your coach's reaction <laughs> to this knockout i mean you achieved something that even some of them that are pros weren't able to do and if they were able to do not as quick a time yeah oh it was it was crazy like like i said um when i got off stage it was so fast i i was like i didn't even know what i just did like i just knocked this girl out i guess um and i'm just like in shock um and i'm just walking back and my team is just like hyping me up that you know they're like good job like you know like you did good and all this stuff and um after i won and ben like came in there i just remember looking at him and i was like coach you know like we fucking did it and i gave him a big hug um i have some really awesome pictures too i'll, I'll probably post them on instagram later but i just gave him a hug and um same thing with dale too I, oh my gosh i have so much love for my coaches like so much love and it was just a very like emotional moment um you know my first knockout first um state title and i definitely was like crying <laughs> i'm a big cry baby so <laughs> it's not surprising i pretty much i think i'll probably cry after all of my fights <laughs> but um <laughs> i think they were tearing up a little bit but you know i was in the moment so i couldn't really tell but um it was just awesome and my team is so supportive and alandria was crying <laughs> for sure i remember giving her a big hug and uh yeah it was just so awesome they're so supportive no 100 percent, and it's it's wild because um you know the way that i like to to when i go to the fights and and what have you it's a it's a, it's a renaissance right because all of it artists right you've got the you know, uh, inspectors and referees, their art, what they see, right? You know, kind of converging on these fights and a litany of fights. You've got your your coaches who you are the player one to them, right? And you're converging. Mm -hmm. You've got the fans and what they feel MMA is and what they, you know, feel worth to, to buy a ticket and patron, right? You've got, you know, guys and girls like me doing interviews and what have you, parlaying the art, people taking pictures, and that's an art. And we all converge, right? And are you, when you talk about like some of the greatest artists of all time, the Da Vinci's, the Michelangelo's, and, and Rembrandt's, and what have you, right? Well, guess what? They're using their tools and they paint on a what? A canvas, right? Or even if it's a sculpture, it's a plain state. Well, guess what? In all of our art, it's almost united in that canvas. I don't care if you call it a tatame, you know, if it's a Muay Thai ring, a cage, what have you, you know, it's it's a canvas. So you are essentially parlaying your art in front in real time. Like that's like Picasso painting what yeah. you know what he did in real time. Like, and that is wild, right? And you even mm -hmm. see the promoters, right? You do knockout promotions down in uh, at the Metroflex, right? The, the McKees and Tracy Hess, they have a different idea of how it's supposed to look. Tony Padilla has a different look. Jason Stewart down yeah, in San so Diego, crazy. right? And it's all of these things. And that's why it's so electric, right? And I encourage everybody to, if you've got a local card around you, like definitely go, man. Because like, it's something that is, you can't really explain. Like I'm, 
pretty decent with words, but like it's the feeling that you get. Uh, and no matter what part you are playing on that given night, there's a definitive electricity that goes through the air that, I mean, it touches everyone that is in the arena. Yeah, definitely. Like when I'm selling tickets and I, I tell people, cause a lot of them have never been to a fight or like they've probably, a lot of my friends, they don't watch like UFC or anything, you know? So I'm just like, yeah, dude, like just go, you know, like they want to support me. So they're going to go. But, um, the way I describe it, I'm just like, it's just fun. Like I, I can't describe it to you. You just have to be there. And like, it's just awesome. And then after they tell me the same thing, they're like, Oh, that was so fun. And uh, definitely support your local fighters or go to local events. Cause it's really cool. And like, I never really understand what a, you know, mixed martial artist really was like the artist part of it until I actually did my first fight and it, it is art and everyone that just comes together. Like I love all the people that work there, like the photographers, like the DJ, the, the light people, you know, it, it's so awesome how it all comes together. No, hundred percent. And you know, it's, it's wild, right? Because all, all three of your fights have been pretty dominant right and that's what led you to this title opportunity right so as an amateur especially here in california the benchmark is you know the california state title in your particular division right and and part of what i feel i obviously uh haven't talked to alandria since definitely got to check in with her but um you know she's almost living vicarious uh, through you because she didn't get to, she turned pro before she got a California state title shot and again because of the the landscape of everything right where yeah you know amateurs returning pros and what have you so you guys you are in the room together right you guys are you know sweating bleeding crying all of this stuff you know learning and everything and you 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 know, like a part of her, a part of each and every one of your teammates are in that title. That's why titles matter. That's why championships matter. Uh, but mm -hmm. the fact that you got it three fights in, right? Like, what now? I mean, <laughs> wh what would you like to do? Because usually, you know, I mean, some... You can almost see, um, especially fighters in the last, like, three years, right? It, where... California State, uh, California Amateur Mixed Martial Arts Organization or CAMO um, has been in existence. They've been uh, existed for longer, but definitely the the state title that's only been like a five to six year thing, right? Oh, wow. And you could almost see when they turn pro, you know, they'll go on a run, or or maybe they don't do as well because again that that title has eluded them. Uh, so. Would you like another amateur fight, a chance to defend your title, or would you like to go pro? Because much like if you don't know amateur MMA or boxing, well, it's similar to the NCAA in the sense that, unfortunately, the athletes aren't getting paid to become amateur. And where it really starts to pay yeah. is when you go pro. And just because you're an amateur, that doesn't mean you're getting amateur gym fees and nutrition and what yeah. have you, right? So have you given any thought to it i mean i know we're a week removed but you know where's your head at um well i have plans for myself and goals obviously like i want to keep climbing my way to the top like my goal is to be like champion of the world like ufc um but you know obviously i need a path to get there and i need to be smart so i've only had three fights i feel very confident that if I did go pro right now, I would be okay. But I also still want to be smart. And, you know, hopefully if, it kind of too depends on if people can find me fights because that's going to be another issue, especially in amateur right now. Um, you know, if I could have one, at least like one more amateur fight, maybe even two, like I would be pretty satisfied with that. Um, so we'll, we'll just see, you know, because what if, we can't find anybody and it's just like, well, you know, I have no, really no choice but to go pro, <laughs> but, um, we'll just see, you know, it's kind of up in the air. Um, I know where I want to be headed. So whatever is going to 
lead me on that path is the opportunities are there, you know, that that's where I'm going to go and that's what I'm going to take. So that's where I'm at right now. Now, if your biggest problem in terms of, you know, your career is fighting, finding fights, you know, you didn't do yourself any favors, right? You, <laughs> you, you had somebody get flown in from arguably one of the most wrestling heavy states in the contiguous United States and a state title fight where all the bright lights are on you. You're a centerpiece of this particular card and you knock her out in seven seconds. Good luck fighting fights is what I'm saying, Jen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. And I understand that. So, you know, we'll, we'll just see what happens, but man, I, I felt so good this last fight. Um, I, I just felt really good. Like, I don't know what feeling like a professional feels like, but I definitely think that, I felt professional in that fight. Like I just, you know, my, my strength training <clears throat> was a big game changer for me. And, um, just, you know, on top of everything else I already do. And it just all like blended so well. And, uh, man, I just felt so good. I felt really good. Every, every aspect. Now, Obviously, I mean, you've been, you know, an athlete to some, you know, especially in combat sports, jujitsu first, and then, you know, the learning striking later on, right? Over the, especially intensely over the last year. But, you know, you were saying like, you know, you're dialing in your strength and conditioning and what have you, which, you know, most people just think, oh, you, you do that anyway, right? So what has that, you know, that, attention that you're paying to your strength and conditioning as a component for success in addition to your grappling prowess in addition to your striking prowess and what have you and eating right and keeping your mind sharp like the focus right like how has that changed the way that you approach a fighting um so for a long time i used to lift weights but like just you know in the gym like freaking bench deadlift like just bulky muscle. So I was really like hesitant to do like strength training. Cause I kind of had like a bad, like image of my mind of what it would do, like just make me slow and like bulky. Um, but I got together with one of my old friends, but he he's into like holistic movement and like, um, resistance training and stuff and it, explosive movements. And so, you know, I linked up with him cause coach Ben, he always tells me to do strength, but again, I, I was like hesitant. I didn't want to do it because it just had a bad like taste in my mouth. So I ended up started training with um, Coach James, and uh, oh my gosh, it, it was, it's just a game changer because everything is like explosive movements. It's not in um, like functional movements, and they literally translate so well to what I do like perfectly. They just translate right over like just the movements, pushing, pulling. Um, and it's not just like lifting heavy weights and stuff. So it, it just helped me so much. Yeah. And it's, it's wild, right? Because again, most people just see, you know, the aftermath, right? Like, Oh, the, the pictures that are posted on Instagram, the, the championships and medals that are adorning, you know, the gym and what have you, but like you, you know, what you have to ch not change about yourself, but improve on yourself at every level of your career, right? You started out a grappling and a grappler, and you're like, ah, I gotta learn striking if I'm really going to make a go at this. Right. And mm -hmm. doing that. Right. And then, you know, you're, not to say you're Achilles Hill, because obviously you had done strength and tra uh, strength training before, but you were like, oh, I'm going to get bulky, right? And that's another, not you would think would be a concession, right? Like, oh, I'm giving in to strength and conditioning or whatever. But what you're really doing is literally future proofing yourself, right? Because, you know, your, your body, it's not, we were talking about Rembrandt and Picasso, right? Well, you know, if the if the damn brush breaks, you can grab another one. If the paint spills, well, oh, whatever, right? But your your tools are your body, and you only got one. Right? Exactly. So, mm -hmm. it, and it's cool that you're, you know, the, the same kind of deal. You're still in a weight room, uh, theoretically speaking. But, again, even the way that you're looking at the weights is a bit different than you did before. 
Yeah, dude, MMA is changing and you just got to keep up with the times. Like as I'm an amateur and these are the things that I do and it's it's a lot of hard work honestly. Like just adding that strength and conditioning was like adding like a whole just another chunk to my training program already and it was really hard um and an adjustment, but it was definitely worth it and um yeah, the, just like times are changing, like you got to keep up. And I, I, like I said, I always want to be like almost over prepared. So I have to watch it, watch out for that because, you know, it could be harmful, but also it, it's a really good thing as well. No, absolutely. Um, and you're speaking the gospel of Genevieve Prado. She's just like, yeah, <laughs> hell yes. Um, no. And it's 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 just absolutely amazing to kind of see you grow and, and you know I'll figure out the ways and see the you know uh, they say about an artist you never are truly appreciated or even monetize your art until after you die. Well, you're getting to see the fruits of your labor, you know, and the sacrifices that you're making in real time. Um, speaking of time, uh, I think she might have gotten a a, a phone call or some odd, but uh, yeah. Hey guys, I'm according to Woods. I do podcasts and all that jazz, do interviews uh, with people such as Jennifer Flores, uh, the new California State champion, uh, Bantamweight champion here. Uh, she won that title back at Sparsa 49 last Saturday at Commerce Casino. Um, but yeah, and it seems like she's back. Sorry. She back. <laughs> no, you're good. I you got excited, excited. <laughs> uh, Fight Life Nation, who... Uh, uh, thank you, good sir, for uh, for allowing me to use a photo of Jen. Uh, but what's going on, Adam? I've been super lucky to be able to photograph all three of Jen Flores' fights, and I can honestly say she's the best female prospect in the game today. <laughs> and Marcos Martinez knows his <laughs> MMA. That's He's so awesome. He's yeah. been super supportive since day one. That's another thing, too, okay? I was talking to my mom, like, there was nobody really cheering for me like my first fight and my second fight, you know, got a little better. But like this last fight was cool because, you know, I had all my people there and like I went from being like an underdog to like a, a local favorite kind of <laughs> well, real you, fast. <laughs> That's well, cool. Even if you didn't hear him, uh, I, I know one person that might have not thought you were an underdog in any one of your fights. And I'm just. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's why I appreciate you, Adam. Oh, man, I appreciate you. No, but uh, that's and that's the thing, you know. Um, obviously, you know, doing interviews and podcasts and you know, for as long as I've done, that's the thing. It's like most people think, like, oh, I got in the MMA or I got into jiu to the you know the the story that you've heard so many times, and no, nobody has the same story. Almost. I've interviewed almost at least a thousand fighters at this point, right? It's crazy. <laughs> nobody has the same story. Everybody's unique. And and again, you know, everybody's trying to get a win, right? Whether that be a submission, knockout, a, a, a unanimous decision, wanting to make your coaches proud and, and what have you. But like the approach to going about that, you know, how you visualize or don't visualize and all of that, right? And that's one thing that I saw pretty early on with you you know it's just like yeah you might have been new to the gym but you you kind of carried yourself as a tenured young veteran and that's why i was like there's something and i said <laughs> the same thing about Alandria. i said like and there's so many and I, I feel fortunate this is where like this is you know this is where i feel like my legacy is kind of intertwined because like i get to show my kids like like they're doing amazing stuff, <laughs> man. Like, so if you don't, and uh, you know, like weight cuts happen, people puking, puking, even after you get a knockout because the adrenaline is what have you, but you push through and you, you make sure that what you envision for yourself is unwavering. No obstacle is too great mm -hmm. because you show yourself what you are made out of. It's not even me. It's not anybody else. It's like seeing somebody who has some sort of you know limitation whether it be monetary whether it be a bad day at the gym bad training session here family drama wherever you know all of that stuff and you overcome it in this like amazing way that everybody gets to see 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That all that stuff just pushes me harder because honestly, I'm on a mission and um, I just want to be the best. Like I want to be the best in the world, and that that's what I'm gonna keep working towards. Like whatever I have to do, however hard I have to train, like that's all I'm focused on. You know, like um, I quit my job at Starbucks, you know, two years ago, and like I I never looked back after that, and I'm just chasing my dream right now. So that's the shit dreams are made out of. That's it. You know, betting on yourself because again, Starbucks, McDonald's, you know, Walmart, Amazon, you know, <clears throat> Netflix. Those were all somebody's harebrained ideas that everybody thought were crazy. Everybody thought they were crazy. There's not anybody that went to Bill Gates, Walt Disney. It was like, ah, no, you got something, kid. No, it wasn't until after they were successful that, you know, the world kind of come and, and literally, mold themselves into their vision right Mm -hmm. but when you're trying to get there yourself there's a lot of ostracization why can't you be normal get a normal job and everything like that but oh yeah yeah (laughs) why are different you're (laughs) way different (laughs) yeah i've definitely dealt with that you know especially like the whole school thing like i was going to cal state san Bernardino for a little while and i've always been good at school too but it just, it wasn't making me happy. And then like COVID happened and that's when I had a little break from Starbucks too. Cause I've always been working like, um, you know, fast paced jobs, like Starbucks, fast food, whatever. And I had that little break and I, it was so relieving. Cause I was like, this is what it feels like to not be stressed out. Like, I don't even know this life not being stressed out. Cause you don't think about it. It's just like a simple job. Like it's easy, but you don't realize how much it takes a toll on you or how stressful it is. And then, you know, I last year was a struggle because being an amateur is hard. Like you're, you're broke. Like there, mm-hmm. there's no way around it. Like even if you ha- work at Starbucks or you're hustling or whatever, you're either way, you're going to end up a little bit broke at least, you know? And so it's hard. Last year was really hard, but it just made me realize that if I could, deal with those hard times I could deal with anything and and it's it's just way better like this path it just makes me so much happier it makes me happy um than you know trying to go to school which didn't make me happy or you know working at Starbucks 40 hours like slaving away for that didn't make me happy no matter how big like that paycheck was or whatever like this is what makes me happy no, 100%. And speaking of happiness, Carol Flores says the Flores family was rolling in deep for Jen. <laughs> so proud of her. She worked hard. Much respect to her opponents. 100%. <laughs> because for you to shine as bright as you are, you got to have, you know, nice dancing partners. And you had three incredible, impeccable dancing partners in all of your fights, mm-hmm. which makes those victories seem a little bit more sweeter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I definitely appreciate the opponents. For sure. Yeah. And uh, Charles, the professor, Wilton goes, uh, yep, fighters are not normal. Definitely I, not. <laughs> nope, not at all. I, I can attest to that. But also the people who film and interview them, we're not normal Not either. normal like, either. Huh? Yeah, exactly. So we just found each other. We all just found each other in this community. <laughs> we just all mesh. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, Fight Life Nation says, question for Jen. What's your, what is your relationship with your coaches, like Ben Jones, Dale Royal Uh Ben Jones looked super supportive of you Saturday night. Um, so what do you feel the, the relationship is? Oh, man. Like, I might cry. <laughs> That's fine. Anyway. <laughs> um. I'm such a crybaby, dude. <laughs> it's fine. Fuck yes. Um, but anyway, um, Ben, so Ben and Dale are definitely like my two, um, you know, main coaches. I, I appreciate and love all my coaches. Like, but um, Ben and Dale are like the most there, you know what I mean? And um, we have more of like a closer bond. But um, Ben and Dale, they're like, parent figures honestly to me um they just support me like emotionally and with everything you know like um I'm a very like anxious person sometimes so 
like Ben will literally like he's so good like he he'll he's able to like calm me down or or like you know get me out of my head which is like a a huge thing especially for fighters like people don't realize how um mental it is it's very uh, mentally challenging like people most normal people would not be able to do it and most people more normal people don't do it <laughs> so it's very important to have those people in your corner for you um especially as a fighter and i don't know that every fighter has that you know um i've i don't think that i've ever really had like very positive like male like role models in my life um <laughs> sorry but um no. anyway so both of them are are like that for me and you know um they all on the other hand um very similar too you know um he's like uh another like um positive uh role model for me too um he gives me a lot of like wisdom and advice and um it's different like i can't compare both of them like similarly you know um they're just like just good role models and dale will give me advice and stuff they never tell me like what to do but they give me like really solid and like good advice um on you know maybe what i should do and then it's up to me to like interpret that and um take it to where i i need to go or whatever but yeah dude like ben and dale <laughs> they're they're awesome no 100 percent uh i yeah just i like i love them both i <laughs> Yeah, it, we're, man, we're not supposed to say it. Every time I fucking see him, I'm like, ah, oh, man, I love you. And he just gives me that grin. Like, okay. <laughs> and then Dale, he was fucking love fest right there. Uh, yeah, Genevieve said, you got this, Jen. 100% she's got it. Um, now, obviously, you know, you're used to being in the gym, right? You just got over COVID, right? And, uh -huh. you, got, and you find yourself with a week off. Not to know what to do with yourself, right? It is <laughs> nice to be home and what have you, but for a fighter, as we all kind of uh, summarize, that you guys are different, right? But I mean, what do you obviously we're on Friday, right? Saturday, the, the previous Saturday was the fight, so if you had a whole week, so was there anything that you got, you know, got into anything you watched, anything that you were taking in in social media, like? What was this week like for you? Well, um, it was just really relaxing. And um, I had a chance to hang out with, like, you know, some of my friends in Redlands that I haven't seen in a while because I'm so busy all the time. I never get to, like, hang out with my friends. So it's really cool. And uh, another thing about being in Redlands is, like, I feel like I get to support, like, the local people. Like, they all, you know, because they all support me and, like, you know, the lady that cuts my hair like i'm like dude one day i'm gonna be in the ufc and i'm gonna have you like <laughs> pay you to come cut my hair you know and um just like the people at zero point um that's the gym i go to up in ukaipa but it's really close to uh redlands those guys are always like super cool and you know i don't have a lot right now and these people are supporting me so especially in the, my local community so you know like i try to do the best i can to like support them back whether it's like just simple like a shout out or like if i put them on my shorts or whatever you know um but it, it feels really cool because especially redlands is just like a small town so you know everyone knows everybody and um yeah it's just cool so i've been like hanging out with them and just catching up and today i'm gonna hang out with my family later family dinner so that's cool that is super cool that is super <clears throat> cool and i think uh, it was a tv commercial of stouffer's back in the day stouffer's you know the tv dinners but i think they got it right because they said uh, obviously stouffer's but nothing comes closer to home and uh i think that's it and you're a shining example of what uh, you know a small community could 
race. They, they, Reckland, stand up. You race the yeah. champion. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's cool. Um, I talked to my old like cross country coach the other day. I found her on Instagram, and I was like, "Hey, like I know." Like, uh, it's been a long time, but you know, like all that distance running that I didn't want to do. And <laughs> back in high school, like it actually helped me. I run, I still run like miles a day. And, um, it's like even running, I've been an athlete all my life, but like running is very mentally challenging, like, especially mm-hmm. like distance running. Uh, you know, sometimes I take it for granted, but like I can run eight miles nonstop, but that's only because all the work I did back in high school, because otherwise I would just be stopping like after three or something, you know? So no, hundred yeah. percent, man. It's a damn ice cream truck. It's <laughs> assholes. So I think they're trying to know that I'm trying to unfat fuck myself. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Talk about mm-hmm. obstacles, man. Like, damn, them donuts taste really good when you're trying to cut weight. Man, and... oh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was cutting weight and, uh, there was cupcakes in the, in the gym and I'm sitting there and Ben comes out and he's like, oh yeah, this tastes good. And he's like eating a freaking <laughs> cupcake. Those evil fuckers. <laughs> so evil evil. Fuckers. <laughs> he's lucky. I don't like cupcakes, but <laughs> it's pretty evil. <laughs> Yeah, it is. 100%. And whoever brought the cupcakes, yeah, we can't yeah. just put it on, on Coach Ben, right? They whoever always brought the have... cupcakes to CSW, a bunch of badass motherfuckers who are getting ready for fights. Whenever I'm fuck, cutting dude? weight, they always have food in there. Um, Coach Paulson's wife, uh, Tanya. Tanya, yeah. She, um, I don't know, the kids always have something going on when I'm cutting weight, and there's always like, tons of food in the fridge and i'm just like all right guys it's cool but when i'm not cutting weight like where's the food at where's it at (laughs) right right there's no (laughs) nowhere to be found (laughs) i mean let's put on the tinfoil hats i i want to believe that it's you know just kind of testing your metal your mental uh (laughs) fortitude right because that's what you need in the fights and what have you so that's it like uh there you go it's some like uh uh what is it (laughs) kung fu the legend continues right like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like that. Oh my god! It, the dude. virtuous life, or whatever. It's um, all. What I mean, speaking of food, right? Uh, obviously, got through COVID, got through uh, you know a treacherous gap where you couldn't indulge in a lot of it. You got your taste and your smell back, and what have you. Um, so obviously, you're gonna go with the family tonight, you know, and and have some tasty, delectable eats. But uh, what was the first thing that you went for uh, after the fight? We got Buffalo Wild Wings. So, you know, I had to get those wings (laughs) and some fries were good. Um, But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, One thing that I really wanted, I don't know, this fight was weird because like usually when I'm cutting weight, I'll crave something like really bad. And usually for some reason it's pancakes. Like I never have like normally want that or anything. But I had it this time, and I, I just wasn't really, like, satisfied. It wasn't the same. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm over pancakes or something. <laughs> well, I mean, you're not doing the, the rock fucking double stack fucking tower of pancakes. Have you seen his cheat day shit? No, I haven't, like he, but I can only imagine. He eats, like, a, a fucking a stack about the size of my computer. like a, Dang. Yeah, and then the fucking <laughs> pizza and whatever. That's one day. I'm like, what the fuck? And you must feel... I mean, he, he's he got two daughters and a wife, you know, and his ex-wife is his manager. Man, I wouldn't want to be around that dude, man, because all <laughs> that is is gas, man. Oof. Gas is high in California, but not around that guy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Free gas. Yeah. Oof, man. <laughs> That's uh, that's something else. But I mean, in in terms of the the, the pancakes, was you know in the time of like deep in the weight cut, and you might have been going through hallucinations there. But <laughs> w- like, what did you envision? What is the perfect stack of pancakes according to Jen Flores? Oh man, I don't know. When I was deep in the weight cut, I was imagining like some like gourmet like foodie restaurant like pancakes, you know, like like red velvet or like with chocolate or something crazy you know like caramel on it i don't know like some crazy like pancake thing (laughs) 
I mean, shit. I mean, w- weird stuff happens uh, during weight cuts, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. your, your mind, your body, your cravings. Go weird stuff. Different. Yeah, oh man. My God. It's horrible. Wild. <laughs> wild. So wild. Um, now, obviously, um, you've done so much in, in such a short time, right? Um, but kind of thinking ahead, right? Because, uh, and it's kind of hard you know, admittedly to do this while you're still in the thick of it, you know, you haven't turned pro and what have you, but have you ever thought about like your legacy? Because you cemented one hall of your legacy, right? In, in the whole kind of grandeur, you know, uh, mansion that is your legacy. Have you thought about what impact that you want to leave in the game when it's all over? Um, I haven't thought about it too much yet, but um honestly one thing that really motivates me is when people tell me that i like inspired their like daughters or something because it's nothing i never like thought about that you know what i mean like my first fight i never went in like oh i'm gonna like inspire people that wasn't even like a anything in my mind you know but it's uh it's really inspiring to like hear those things and i just would like to like do something for other people people i guess you know through what i'm doing so i don't i don't exactly know how i'm gonna like do that yet but maybe one day i'll put it together you know and uh something will happen but that's definitely like something i would want to accomplish or my legacy definitely help the community in redlands that that's one thing i never like thought would be a thing you know like I just live here grew up here but I never thought that you know people would support me from here like I I, that doesn't make sense like of course you know they're going to uh but it just didn't cross my mind or anything nothing like that crossed my mind until I finally got to this point and it's starting to happen a little bit no so I mean maybe I'm just putting it out there and we'll revisit this and yeah good 10 years time huh? <laughs> we'll, we'll do this again in 10 years time or we'll do it a bunch of times before then but definitely we'll mark this on the calendar well when you when we're doing an according what's podcast from the jennifer flores mma academy in redlands california when yeah you're breaking ground when you're cutting the ribbon we're gonna yeah. do this something this. like that or even working maybe working for like camo or something or yeah. like yeah, that'd be as cool. a, an official and expector. Yeah, like yeah. Chris Lieben and Frank Trigg. Frank Trigg's in the UFC Hall of Fame. Chris Lieben is a literal legend. And shout out and uh, just prayers because uh, COVID hit him pretty bad uh, too. But you know, those are two guys. You know, um, there's so many. You know, uh, uh, Herzog, um, Herb Dean, Dave yeah. and Jackie Denkin, Victoria and and Elizabeth. Right. Uh, there, there's so many. You know. Uh, Mark and, and Angelica, who just had a birthday, but they're so great, you know, and they all have legit martial arts background, boxing, yeah. Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, and they continue to give back. Dave Bell, David Michael Bell, like just some of the greatest minds to ever be involved in all of combat sports. And we have them right here on a week to week basis on every yeah. show. Yeah, that's so crazy. That's something I never expected either. Like when I did my first um, Spar Star event or whatever, and I saw um, Herb Dean, I was like, what? Herb Dean, what? That's so crazy. And he's just like chill, like, you know, like it's really cool. And all those people I feel like are giving back, you know, by doing Mm -hmm. camo and we need them. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, Mylan errors, Libby Canelo. There's, there's so many. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, very integral in my success because before I got credentials, and I think we could say it now, but uh, a lot of them would would sneak me into shows. Oh, that's so, yeah, cool. so <laughs> yeah. And I was just there, and then next show I got credentials and whatever. That's awesome. So, so yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a. Yeah, the interviewer podcaster, but I'm a camo guy. Yeah, I was <laughs> raised. I, I think I might have the only distinction of being a kind of media personality that was raised up, uh, not as a fighter, but as mm-hmm. a as a as a camo person. And Dave Denkin, every time I see him, he's like, "Oh, you you should you should be an inspector." And I'm like, "Yeah." And all I would want to do is just interview him. Like, <laughs> it's not going to work, Dave. He's like, he's like, "What? Look at this envelope." And I'm like, "Yeah," but I'm. Just, 
look at this microphone though. <laughs> yeah, it's you pretty work in for the camo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, definitely. We need you too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. Um, now, obviously, um, you spoke about the Red Lens. You spoke about the, your family that have supported you so much. But um, obviously, there have been a lot of people who have played a major role, right? Even if it's a minor role, right? Uh, in your success, right? And your California State Bantamweight Women's Championship win. Um, so take as long as you need. Let's get some shout outs out of the way. Um, well, definitely my mom. I could never do anything, you know, like that I do today without her. She is so supportive and she just like handles all the little stuff that you don't think about. And She's amazing. I, I couldn't do it without her. Um, so my mom, obviously, uh, my family in general, like my brothers, um, Genevieve, Danny, all, all my family. Uh, definitely my coaches, Coach Ben, Coach Dale, um, Coach James, Coach Rick, um, Coach Paulson, you know, my manager, Danny, um, all my sponsors. I def like seriously, I could not do it without you guys being an amateur is so i'm so broke like uh mr brown uh you know zero point athletics love leaf um i don't know i'm probably like forgetting somebody but like please please don't hurt me you guys uh you guys help me out so much i, I was like I, if I you have you. another shirt chances are all of those people that you're forgetting to name they might be on the back there team hustle uh yeah I, all you guys like thank you so much um you know um my team my whole team i could not do it without them you know who would i train with you know without them how could i get ready um so the whole badger crew um csw uh all you guys um who else i think that's pretty much it the fans all the fans i've gotten and stuff like all the people that say like i inspire them um it's awesome to hear um people that you know just support me uh i appreciate all of you everybody so thank you no well jennifer thank you for doing this this is always a pleasure um Jesus, man, it's it's been so cool, and this is what is super humbling and gratifying to me to kind of see, you, you know, first fight, second fight, and what have you. Even before you started fighting, you're like, I think I might, I think I might, whatever, and <laughs> just to see you grow, you know, and and see you confident in yourself and your abilities, right? You're you're fortified by all of the wars that you fight in the gym on traffic from Redlands to Fullerton, like everything, you know, all of the, the social life that you don't get to have because you're training for the bigger goal. Right. I mm -hmm. am so impeccably proud of you. And uh, when I found out you were training there, I was like, that's a perfect place for you. Perfect <laughs> it's place the perfect you. place. Yes, <laughs> it is. It is. And to see you totally, uh, completely enveloped in, in the fabric of, what CSW is, and you know the again, you know Eric Paulson, Ben Jones told me when he did Jim Crashers a couple of years back that IBJJF, uh, International Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Federation, doesn't recognize Eric Paulson's black belt. I said, "What? Like literally what? a dude who went around the world, spent his entire life figuring out cool." shit the fuck people up <laughs> go catch wrestling in england go cali sick in That's philippines crazy. Get whatever and i was like yeah you know you ibjj have your bunch of payasos <laughs> That's like, like that's the like. Whoa! Oh. I know it's Eric Paulson. Come on, yeah, dude. My leg know. lock game has gotten so much better since I've been there. Like, it's crazy. It's only gonna get better too. My whole grappling is only gonna get better. Yeah, and yeah. it's funny, right? Because like, you know, that over the last five years in terms of jujitsu, like, ah, uh, I mean, unless you're like the Ryan Halls and what have you, like, you know, maybe the Ten Planet folk, you know, like, ah, uh, now leg locks, now leg locks, but. No, catch wrestlers are doing this at the turn of the century, calling them grapevine. I'm going to grapevine mm -hmm. your legs and whatever. Mm -hmm. Can't do anything about it. You can't yeah. do anything about it, right? And yeah. That's... He knows so much. Like, if you ask him, like, about one move, he will give you, like, 10,000 ways to, like, counter it or, like, you know, get a submission from there. It's crazy. He knows so much. An encyclopedia, dude. He's, he knows so much. 
Yeah, Moretti is, right? So, again, <laughs> if you haven't already done, so go ahead and check out Eric Paulson, the CSW Training Center, the Badger Crew on all of their social medias. You'll get cool little fun uh, <laughs> fun tidbits in terms of technique and everything. And you know what's the fun part for me is like, oh, Ben Jones getting stretched? What is by Eric Paulson? Oh, <laughs> Jacob Rosales getting stretched? Oh, because it's by Ben Jones. And like this whole thing, like these, up here, like you all badasses, but like you, you know, there's one, just a higher, you know, there's levels of shit. And yeah, it's just exactly. one level higher or <laughs> eons of levels higher. And I just think that's the fun part for me. I'm like, nobody else could get that person in that position, but <laughs> that person Paulson did. Yeah. Paulson did. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just saying, but we uh, speaking of social medias and places that you can follow people, uh, Jen Flores, for people to get more acquainted with JFlow, where can they find you on social media? Um, I have Twitter and Instagram, so it's at JFlow Janelle, J F L O J A N E L L, and you guys can follow me there. Damn right, it's right there and on her name card. But I've also. Uh, link them right here in the description of wherever you're watching this. So you can go ahead and just click the description. It'll take you right there. I'm just saying that's that's what I try to do for the people. Connecting people and all that and whatever. It's according to what so I'm just saying. <laughs> but Jennifer, I am so proud of you. I'm so glad to have you here. And uh, thank you guys for joining us here at According to Woods. And if you haven't already done so, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to the According to Woods podcast on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and even Twitter. Uh, JFlow. Champ, you're subscribed to the podcast, aren't you? Yeah. Damn right she is. <laughs> go ahead and be like the California State Bantamweight Women's Champion, Jennifer Flores, and go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. But if you don't believe me, don't believe her, and I don't know why you wouldn't, well, here's Zeta Zang. Hey, this is Zeta Zang. Make sure you subscribe to According to Woods.